UNICEF has been working with various organizations in Belize to support a project that aims to create an enabling environment to prevent child abuse and exploitation in the country. The project falls within the purview of the organization's three priorities, protection of children, access to justice, and prevention of violence. This particular project is a central, um, a central platform through which UNICEF offers its support through partnership, advocacy, communication, and engagement at the technical level to ensure that Belize can gradually move towards realization of our own goals here in Belize to make Belize a safer place for children, um, free, of, free from violence, and with available support for the long term to transform Belize into um, a safe and supportive environment for children. A two-day workshop began today to reflect on the work of several partner agencies, including the Youth Enhancement Services, the Child Development Foundation, and Legal Aid. The initiative was spread across the country over the past two years. We partnered with UNICEF to provide, one, some awareness raising for parents on issues related to violence against children, so looking at inappropriate disciplinary practices and helping parents to address common behavioral problems with children so that it doesn't result in them abusing the child in an attempt to discipline them. What our role was, was almost threefold. One, we were working with young people, adolescent girls and boys who were going into schools, talking about sexual abuse, talking about exploitation, human trafficking, how to protect themselves from abuse and where to report. The second part of the project had to do with parents and as you know, YES operates a teen mom center. Mm -hmm. And so we have a lot of teen, young teen mothers who attend our program. And what we do with them or did with them was to say, okay, you all are young parents. You are a bit still immature in that field. And so what we did every other Tuesday, so twice a month, we did parenting sessions along with the SNRH sessions that we usually did. No? And thirdly, we, we look at older, parents, because then the older parents have always been saying too that they have challenges working with adolescent children. The Productive Organization for Women in Action is based in Dangriga and also participated in the program cooperation agreement. Michelle Irving says that living a life free of violence is a human right and the country should be working towards that goal and ideal. So we had um, educators that go into the schools that talk to children about um, child abuse and the prevention of child abuse, what it is, what it looks like, what it smells like, what it feels like, and um, then give them the tools necessary to report um, if they are being abused or if they see someone you know, being abused. And so um, the idea to look at our community systems and to continue to build on those systems as it, as it relates to ending violence um, for children particularly, but for communities and for families in general. The largest component of the project was the legal aspect where people, specifically children, seem not to know their rights and where the law protects them. 18 clinics were organized across the country by the Legal Advice and Services Center, commonly known as Legal Aid, to provide free legal services to the general public. A small portion is that they don't know what their rights are. So that is a small portion of it. We can't discount that. But the greater problem, doing is that the access to the legal services, getting not only the information that you need, but then the secondary issue of getting the representation for what you need. But is the concept of spare the rod and spoil the child taken too far? An interesting finding of the project is that there are traditional forms of discipline that are abusive. Sometimes there is some cultural acceptance of violence. And a lot of times um, violence to correct a, a wrong or what we perceive as a mistake and things like that. We all grew up with, for example, our parents whipping us or stoning us with the scrub board or um, those kind of actions because they wanted to correct the wrongs. There are very varying parenting styles we found from doing this project. And we did have to have some conversation about some things that we may be doing that may not be the best thing. So we looked at traditional methods of discipline, which focused a lot on physical punishment and the heavy use of corporal punishment. Country rep for UNICEF Belize, Dr. Susan Cassede, says that there must be a public-private sector approach to address the issues of child abuse and exploitation. We're not going to solve the problem of child abuse and exploitation without every hand on deck. 
because violence may begin in the home, but the factors that lead to violence, and we've heard about some of that today, the conditions of stress, in exclusion, um, lack of employment, financial hardship, and all the things that contribute to the mental state, the feeling of inclusion and capacity of a parent, factors into the way that they relate with children. And it, the same applies for teachers in schools. Twin Moody for News 5.